Okay, to connect your remote app to your Cine Shooter, first go to the settings in your device, go to the Wi Fi, and click on Cine Shooter. Once that's connected, launch the app and allow it to connect. Just to make sure we have connection, try to move your motors. We're all good there. So now the first thing we want to go over is your controls of the motors. You have three slider bars, obviously one for slider, and your aux one, aux two. Those would be used for either fizz motors or for your roll axis or turntable. You'll notice on your sliders, as well as on the joystick, you have direction arrows. Those are your bump buttons for doing minor movements. They're just little taps and they'll move an incremental amount of speed or distance. Same for slider, aux one and aux two. You'll also notice that you have settings icons, the little gear. If you tap on those, It'll bring up your ability to reverse the orientation, your bump button values. So if the increment for a bump is too large or small, you can change what that value is. Also, your hold speed, which is when you're pressing and holding on the bump buttons, it's how much of this value per second will be applied. So the default is 20, and I can demonstrate that. So with pan, if you push and hold, it's just a jog into position and then bump a few times till you get it precisely where you want. You can do that for all of the axis. Once you move your motors into the desired position for a keyframe, you just select record keyframe. The phone will vibrate and also give you a, a notification at the bottom it's been recorded. And inside the record keyframe button, it'll say five of 12 have been used. We have our joystick setup menu which is a lot like the setup for the slider menu. So you can reverse your orientations. You can also adjust the values of your bump and hold speeds for your bump buttons. And it also you have your dead band adjustment, which is this value represents how far you move the joystick from center before the motors actually start to respond. And we also have our joystick type. So linear will be 50% of movement would give you 50% of your setup speed. As to where log 50% movement may be only 20% on the first 50% of your travel, but then ramp up the final 80% of your speed on the outer uh, travel of the joystick. That is useful when you're trying to do very precise work and want a lot of precise control, but still the ability to speed up when needed to move to a new subject. We also have emulation mode. To use emulation mode, you push and hold on emulation. Now tilting your phone will tilt the camera and rolling your phone will pan your camera. We're gonna go over your bottom menu options. As you notice, you'll have an S for slider, P for pan, T for tilt, aux one and aux two icons. Clicking on these will take you directly to that particular access setup page. So you can rename what that axis is for, what the motor address is, your maximum setup speed. This is nice for if you're doing a lot of, let's say macro work, you can slow this way down. That'll give you a lot more fine control when moving motors to set up. You also have your setup damping value. You have your max motor move speed. So when playing back a move, this is at its maximum, but you can choke that down if you don't want loud noise, or you just want to make sure that you're limiting the speed to a particular range. You can also reverse the orientation of that motor as well, or that axis. Over here you have a gaming controller icon. When you click on that and you have your gaming controller linked to your app, this will allow you to program every button to different actions. It comes with a default set that we like and most people use, but you can go in and change that however you'd like to suit what you're working with. And then you have your master uh, settings. So in here you have your keep phone awake, fast mode. That allows the motors to wind up to their maximum speed. You may want to turn that off if you're doing 
interviews, this will reduce the motors to a very slow or a slower speed that will be nearly inaudible at all times. So when it's returning to home or while you're setting up, it will keep you to a speed that cannot be picked up by microphone. You also have your update Wi-Fi settings, your device firmware, resetting your device, your motor settings, which are also available on the bottom menu on every screen, your user guide, release notes, and zip and log files. So if you ever do have an issue, please zip and share log files. That'll go right back to us to allow us to diagnose uh, the problem that you may have had. To view these keyframes, click on the view keyframes and you'll see that they're arranged here on this screen. Okay, so now that we're on the view keyframes page, you can press and hold on a keyframe and you can replace that keyframe. You can delete the keyframe, delete all of your keyframes. You can move a keyframe. I'll show you how to do that now. Once you click on move a keyframe, you'll notice these little dot icons that allow or notifies you that you can move it by pushing and holding and dragging to a different position. And that'll just change the sequence. The keyframe will be the same. It's just, it will play from your first to your last recorded keyframes. So we can also set a label, reset the label, select an image from your photos, or you can take one right here while you're setting up your shot that would give you a representation of the keyframe. We also have mini event mode. So when turning that on, what that will do is adjust the transition time while changing keyframes. So press keyframe two, as you can see, it's going to two, and I can speed this up or slow it down. This is really useful when you're doing live events and you have certain positions that you wanna call up. Okay, now we're on to the live motion page. Start off in the upper left corner. So here you have your move time. So you had previously set up your keyframes. So now we want to adjust what we want the runtime to be. So we'll set this for 20 seconds. Ramping, this will give you a visual graph. Uh, ramping is the speed at which it will ease in and out of every keyframe position. And it will give you a visual representation for every axis that you had part of this move. It will also tell you the minimum move time. So this particular move can run at a maximum of 2.2 seconds, but we're going to run it for 20 seconds. We also have a delay feature. So what this will do is allow you to set a delay with a countdown that you can use kind of like a, a key for your camera where you put your device in front of your camera to see a countdown before the start. So you can key all of your different moves together. Looping. With looping off, the move will run one time and stop. With looping on, it will continue. On your setup page, this will also allow you to globally adjust all those same features. And then at the bottom, you have a scrub bar. The scrub bar will allow you to scrub through the move that you created to get an idea of what it might look like. And if you're happy with that, then you can Go ahead and start your playback. The scrub bar now changes to a progress bar, letting you know how far along you are in the move. Anytime you can pause the move and then continue, or you can stop. Now we're going to take a look at the time lapse screen. So this will still function off of the original keyframes that you had set up in the setup move screen. So you have your move time, your ramping, just like in live motion. You have how many photos that you'd like to take. Let us leave it set to 100. All right. So now in the delay screen, uh, you can click on that to adjust your delay. That's your interval de delay between your exposures. And then to set exposure time, you can either do that in camera. Let's say you set your camera to two seconds, you would wanna set this, this to two seconds or longer. If you're having our system fire your camera on manual mode, this would be how long that the shutter stays open for. You also have a setup icon down here. 
So again, this goes through a lot of what's already there. So your exposure, delay, and how many photos will determine how much time it will take to complete that move. And you can change the calculated field by highlighting it here. So now it, you just set the exposure, delay, and move time, and it will say you'll need 100 photos, or you can have it lock in the delay and adjust all your other parameters based off of that. Your video clip length, um, if you're playing, if you're going to compile it at 24 frames per second, is saying that this move will render you a 4.2 second clip. Pre-move photos and post-move photos, these are how many photos you would like to take prior to starting the move and after the move has completed if you want some static shot after that. You can also choose two different styles of time-lapse shooting. You have shoot, move, shoot, that's where it takes a photo, stops, moves to the next position, photo, waits, next position, and so on. Continuous is where the motors are continuously moving at a slow rate while taking the photos. Um, you also have the ability to use an, an external interval intervalometer. By selecting that, it'll act more like a stop motion using a signal from your external intervalometer or software to trigger our system when to move to the next position. And you also have a test fire button to test to make sure that communication between the cine shooter and your camera is functioning properly. And at the very bottom, you also have another scrub bar just to verify the shot that you've created. Now we're gonna to go to the stop motion page. On the stop motion page, you can press home and that will take your cine shooter to the first keyframe home position. You have an option for auto on and off. What this stands for, or what this is representing is auto advancement. So after you take your first photo and it goes through its cycle, it will step to the next position automatically. With this off, you would have to manually take the photo, wait for it to complete, and then advance manually to the next position. So you have options there. So currently it's saying that we're on photo three. You can click, well, we'll go to photos. So this is how many photos that you want to take over this move that you created. You can adjust that. And then you can at any time hit to go to a certain photo position. So let's say you need to retake photo, let's say 69. Now the camera will go to that exact position and allow you to retake it. Then you have your exposure, which just like in time-lapse, this is how long, if you're controlling your camera shutter from our system, how long the camera will expose for. So now on manual move screen, this is just a simplified screen with just your basic controls for doing manual live shooting. No pre-programmed moves. So on here, you would just have full control of all axis that you have connected and you will have that control up to 200 feet away with both the phone app as well as a gaming controller that is paired with the phone app.